Um, let's pray. It's going to be really short. So, Father God, thank you for everything that you do for us. Thank you for watching over and finding us. Um, yeah, let's do this. I pray that you work on the hearts and minds of everyone. Amen. Okay, so it's Bible studies, so we're going to do it like Bible studies. Cool. So today in our breakout session, we talked about where the salvation story began. We're talking about salvation for who? For me? Um, so when it comes down to salvation story, where did everybody say it began? My group, we had, my group was LMA, Jacobio, Penny, Kakara, and me. Our group was kind of divided, and we said that some people said it started at the Garden of Eden, where Eve, well, Adam and Eve fell, and they ate, and you know, sin came into the world. Other people said it started at the cross. Abigail's group, so that's Emanuela, Casey, Zach, I'm assuming Ohenaba, Isaac, PC. Like, what did y'all say? Yeah, we said the same thing, cross and Adam and Eve. Mm-hmm. Everyone tell me why from either side of the garden. Why each point? So like why the garden and why the cross? Um, Casey gave her reasoning, so I'll allow Casey to say her reasoning if she's here. Okay, um, I said it might have started with the Garden of Eden where Adam and Eve sinned because once they sinned, it's like they kind of felt sorry after they realized what they have done. So they could have repented, but the Bible doesn't really talk about if they repented or not. Okay, and then for the cross people, how about, no, I'm not going to call nobody out yet, Melissa, I'm going to Somebody who stood up for the cross, the story of the cross, like Jesus died for your sins. Why do you think that's where the salvation story began? Um, I would assume that for, I guess, some of the people who um, said that, you know, kind of quote unquote logically makes sense that that's where it began. If that's where Jesus died, um, that must be where the salvation story begins. So I would assume was the reasoning. I'm going to that too. Okay, well, I am on this side (laughs) of the fact that it started at the Garden of Eden, but we're, so I plan today um, to take us through like a timeline of how the salvation story works out. So like, so that it can make sense, right? I know we had a question that was like, it doesn't really make sense as to why you would say the Garden of Eden, because they fell there. Mm -hmm. The Bible is about reconciliation, so why would you move on, if that makes sense? Um, why wouldn't you start at where Jesus died, where he actually did the reconciliation? My answer to that question would be, you have to know why we need the reconciliation in the first place to get to the point of reconciliation, if that makes sense. So Jesus died and he reconciled us back to the Father. yes. So now we don't have, have to go to the temple, the priest, and all this stuff. We can go to the holies of holies our own self, but we couldn't do that before. So then the question becomes, why couldn't we do that before? And the reason why we couldn't do that before is because Eve chose to be deceived in Genesis 3. <laughs> Eve chose to get deceived and listen to the serpent when he was like, what do you mean? God would, God is literally telling you not to eat this because it ain't going to be more like, which under all technicalities isn't a lie. Right? God knew the, the difference between good and evil and she didn't. So she was going to be more like him, but it wasn't a good thing for her, obviously, or we wouldn't be suffering in this world today. Right? So um, that's where it started. And then Adam chose to eat it as well. And that's how we are where we are. Right? So let's start off from the salvation story. So Garden of Eden, Genesis 3, like I said, serpent happened, serpent to Eve. We have the whole conversation. Most of us have gone to Sunday school. I know you know this story. You messed up. Now I'm going to ask y'all, what do y'all think happened next? Like, tell me, take me through the timeline of how we get to the cross, and then we can talk about the cross after. Thank you, Deacon Collins. Did that question make sense or no? Um, can you repeat it? So like, now that the Garden of Eden has happened, right, people have fallen. What's next? Like, after that story, what was the next story that we go to before we get to the cross? Um, the, the, like the next story, like right after Adam and Eve? 
summarize it, you can be like the Old Testament happened, or you could be like Jesus was born, or um, the 12 disciples, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like something like that. Jack, keep going, and then maybe we'll make it make sense in a second. Okay, so my next thought is that basically the rest of the Old Testament, I'm just going to skip, but like most of the Old Testament happens where Moses, you know, he was the people of Egypt. You have um, David becoming king, Solomon becoming king, all of the prophecies about Jesus being born. He's going to be the Messiah. He's going, Jesus is about to be. There's a, there's a coming Messiah. There's, there's a guy who's coming <laughs> into this earth, and he's going to save the Israelites from all their suffering, basically. And there's this, there's this person that we don't know. He's king of kings. He's the Lord of Lords. Like, this person is about to be majestic, and this king is coming into the earth, right? So you hear all these prophecies, and then we get to the New Testament. The first thing you know in the New Testament is what? Baby Jesus is coming. Christmas story. So <laughs> what happens in the Christmas story? Somebody tell me that. Yeah, how about that? Someone tell me. What happens? What's the Christmas story? So, you, okay, go ahead. Hello. Okay, so like, it was like the Virgin Mary was pregnant, but she was a virgin. So like, it was just, but but she got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So from there, like, it was really crazy, and then. Three, the three wise men. <laughs> I'm so sorry. The three wise men came and she um, came to the place where Jesus was born, and just gave him gifts, and that's how Jesus was born. Like that's just some of it. Yeah, that's fine. Anybody else want to tell a story or add to the story? Did she mean something that you think you need to say? take that as a no. I agree. That was a big, that's basically the Christmas story, you know? Maybe. Um, we have a young woman at the age of whatever the age was, because people say she was like 14, otherwise she was young, all right? She's betrothed with Mary yet, but she's about to get married to this young man named Joseph, and she sees an angel one day, <laughs> and it's like, yo, don't be scared, um, but you're about to have, like, God's child. And she's like, wait, what? <laughs> He's like, yeah, um, yeah, but don't be scared. And she's like, well, the Lord wants me to do you. And so this is all summarized under the Esther version because she definitely didn't say I got you back then. But um, she did that. And then, you know, she's obviously pregnant. And Joseph is like, hey, bro, they told me you were a virgin. What is going on here? I paid my bride price. And, you know, bride price goes higher when you're when you're a virgin. So he's like, bro, y'all better get my money back or something because that's messed up. <laughs> and, um, you know, another angel comes to Joseph and is like, hey, like she's pregnant or she's about to be pregnant or something. Like, don't, don't, um, don't leave her, basically leave her because, you know, that's, that's what God wills. And he's like, all right, cool, I'll, I'll do it, sure. So Mary is pregnant with a child from the Holy Spirit. So now my question is, was Joseph... Jesus' stepfather or his father? Say the question one more time. Was Joseph Jesus' stepfather or father? Like his actual dad? What do you think both? I want to say stepfather. I'll say that too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Because me too. Okay, J Joseph was definitely Jesus' stepfather, right? Obviously, Jesus had one mom because he came out of one woman, right? But there's, there's this thing where it says that Jesus was 100% man and 100% God, right? And the only reason he could be 100% God is really because he was fashioned in the form of, well, he was himself, but the Holy Spirit had to, you know, put him. Yeah, he came out as a man, as a man, like we will come out as a, as a human, but at the same time, he was 100% God because he had no biological ties, really, to anybody else but Mary, to be honest. So there's that. Okay, so Jesus is born. Jesus is living his best life. And he's living a perfect life, okay? Like, I have a friend that's always joking about it. It really sucks for Jesus' step-siblings because Jesus literally did everything right. So you can, like, if you can imagine Mary being an African mom, you can hear her always saying, why can't you be just like Jesus? 
Huh? Why can't you be like Jesus? Jesus is cleaning the kitchen. Jesus is going to make his bed. You two got here, you're crying. You don't want to make your bed. You don't want to make your bed, right? And the truth is, like, high key, that probably was what was going on in his household because why couldn't you be like Jesus? Because he's literally doing nothing wrong. The only time where he got in trouble a couple of times, right, was when they went to the, um, they went up to the temple to, you know, go do like the normal thing for sins and giving their first fruits to Jesus, to God and things like that. And he was in the temple teaching the other, the other people and his parents left him. And Mary comes back like, bro, like, where, what did you do? Like, why did you, yeah, you made us all scared. Like we left you, all this stuff. And he was like, don't you know about my father's business? And I was just like, the only Jesus can say, woman, don't you know my, I'm about my father's business and not get slapped. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wish I would tell my mom something like that. But um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Jesus has other siblings. Like, some of his disciples were his siblings. But, um, yeah, so Jesus is living his best life. You know what I'm saying? He's doing the perfect thing. 30-something years and around 30, like, 30-something years, but from a young age, he started to do ministry at some point. You know, after he turned water into wine, he basically propelled into the ministry, found his 12 disciples, his 12 best friends, Basically, there was about 72 other people that just followed him, like 100 or something people that also, you know, followed him around. But for the most part, um, it was the 12. You know, he sent out the 12 for the most part. So, like, you know, the 12, Peter, James, John, etc., cetera, um, Judas, all of them. And they did the work of the Lord together. Um, and then one day, one day, we get to the Easter story. Who wants to start off the Easter story for me? Well, actually, no, never mind. Don't do that. So <laughs> Jesus goes to Gethsemane, right? And that's where, you know, he basically like cried but buzz of tears and he's like, God, like I know what's about to happen. You know, I'm about to die. I know I'm about to die for all these people and all this stuff. And I know that we've had this plan since I was born. And so, you know what I'm saying? Like, since I came into this earth and things like that. But you know, if you want to take this cup from me, please go right ahead. Nobody is going to stop you today because I kind of don't want to do it but if it's your will i'll do it right cool now let us go to matthew 27 and i need three readers so you're going to be a reader say me in the chat or say it out loud or something matthew 27 by the way any volunteers to read Nobody wants to read. Wait, what was the verse? Seven. All right. Who wants to read? I need three. Jacoby says she'll read that. You can get one through 18. Who else? Casey. All right, Casey, you get 19 to 36. Last person. A boy. I would like a boy. Bet, oh, Hinaba, you got 37 to 54. So, Jehulia, you can go ahead and start us off. Okay. Matthew chapter 27. Judas hangs himself. Early in the morning, all the chiefs, priests, and the elders of the people made their plans how to, how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was come condemned he was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders i have sinned he said for i have betrayed innocent blood what is that to you to us they replied that's your responsibility so judas threw the money into the template and left then he went away and hanged himself the chief priest picked up the coins and said it is against the law to put this into the treasury since it is blood money so they decide, decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a bur burial place for foreigners. That is why it has been called the field of blood to this day. Then what was spoken by Jeremiah, the prophet, was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used, the, they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord con commanded me. Jesus before Pilate. Meanwhile, Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. When he was executed by the chief of priests and the elders, he gave no answer. Then Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge. 
to the greater to the great amazement of the governor to the great amazement of the governor now it was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd at the time they had a well-known prisoner whose name was jesus barbaros so when the crowd had gathered Pilate asked them which one do you want me to which one do you want me to release to you jesus barbados or jesus who was called the messiah for he knew it was out of self-interest and that they had handed Jesus over to him. Okay, 19. While Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him his mes- this message. Don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I-, for I have suffered a great deal in a dream because of him. But the chief priest and the elders pers- say, pers- ooh, pursued the crowd to ask for barbarous and to have Jesus executed. Which of the two do you want me to release to you? Asked the governor. Barbarous, they answered. 22, what should I do then with Jesus who was called the Messiah? Pilate asked. They all answered, crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? Asked Pilate. But they all shouted all the louder, crucify him. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but that instead an uproar was stirring he took water and washed his face, washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent. I am the innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. Other people answered, his blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barbarus to them. But he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers mocked Jesus, 27. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the paradigm and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him they stripped him and put a scarf robe on him and they twisted together a crown of thorns to sit it on his head they put a staff in his right hand then they knelt in front of him and mocked him hail king jesus hail king of the jews they said they spit on him and took the staff and struck him on the head again and again they had mocked him. They took off the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to be crucif- to be to crucify him. Yeah. Because of Jesus. Do I go to thirty two or do I stop at thirty one? Thirty six, sorry, thirty six. Okay. As they were going out, they met a man from Siron Sy- named Simon, and they forced him to carry the cross. They came to a place called Golan Golan? Golan? Golgotha, which means the place of the school. There, there, they offered Jesus wine to drink, mixed with gall, but after tasting it, he refused to drink it. When they had crucified him, they divided up his clothes by casting lots. And sitting down, they watching, kept watch over him there. You got it. Above his head, above his head, they placed the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two rebels were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by hurled insults insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, you who are going to destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. Come down from the cross if you are the son of God. In the same way, the chief priests, the teachers of the law, and the elders mocked him. He saved others, they said, but he can't save himself. He's the king of Israel. Let him come down now from the cross, and we we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God rescue him now if he wants him, for he said, I am the son of God. In the same way, the rebels who are crucified with him also heaped insults on him, the death of Jesus. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over all the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Ew, ew, lama sabbathin, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, he's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. 
He filled it with wine vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered to Jesus, it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. At that moment, the certain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tomb after Jesus resurrected and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the Syrian and those with him who were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that had happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, surely he was the son of God. Many women were there watching him from, from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee to care, care for his needs. Among them were Mary, Magdalene, Mary, the mother of G James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons, the burial of Jesus. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Amathia named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean lined cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Mary McDonald and the other Mary were sitting there opposite the tomb. All right, you're good. Thank you. Um, okay, so that was a lot. We're going to break it down. I need somebody to tell me what happened in the beginning of the story. Nobody? Nobody wants to tell me what happened in the beginning? Like the first 18 verses? Ben, I got y'all. Okay, so Jesus um, is about to be betrayed by his one and only Judas, right? So basically, what had happened was, um, you know, all the chief priests and elders of the, of the like, the church at the time, um, like the, I want to call them the, the they call the Levites. Those are Levites that had it, right? Abby, or somebody, who knows? That had the what? Like the high priest. Hmm, good question. Okay, well, one of these tribes, right? But um, high priest people, the chief priests and the, uh, the elders of the the temple, that's a better way to put it. They're all plotting for Jesus to die because Jesus has been saying a lot of things that he's like the son of God and all these things. I mean, he was, but like him saying it, or he is, him saying it for all these people was blasphemy, right? Straight blasphemy. So they're like, this man has been blaspheming God since he came, since he started talking to people um, and teaching and all this stuff. So this guy got to die. Like he's doing the most over here healing people on the Sabbath and stuff, just reckless. So we have got to kill this man at this point. That's what they were thinking. So they go to Pilate, who's their governor, like the governor over where the Israel, the Israelites were at the time in Rome. And Judas is like, cool, you know what I'm saying? He was like the treasurer of the group. And so he's like, I mean, I got the money. If you want to know where Jesus is at, give me 30 pieces of silver. I was like, wasn't that very simple. Um, but then he kind of felt bad when he did it. So he took the 30 pieces, but then he like threw it back. And he's like, dang, like he's innocent. He didn't do anything to y'all, but whatever. And because of all the guilt, like I guess because of all the guilt, he went and killed himself. Um, but anyways, the chief priest and Pilate and all those people, they go find him. They get Jesus. They put Jesus up. And then um, Pilate is standing before all the people, right? And he's like, yo, y'all want me to put 
this Jesus the Christ up for what? Like he hasn't done anything. And they're like, nah, nah, man, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him, kill him. Because around this time, they're allowed to, they have one time a year where they're allowed to like bring out one one prisoner out of jail, basically. And they had Jesus named Jesus the Barabbas, right? But nobody calls him that. We just usually call him Barabbas. And Barabbas was, you know, he committed a lot of problems. He was like a felony. A felon. He was somebody who like, if it was America today, back then, he he would have committed like a lot of felonies. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude would be in like one of the most secure prisons out there, all right? He just did a lot. And <laughs> um, they were like, give us Barabbas and kill Jesus. Like, that's what we want. That's what we want. So Pilate is like, listen, I'm not messing with this. So um, he washes his hands in front of everybody. He's like, listen, you know, y'all got it. I'm not, his blood's not going to be on my hands. I'm not about to come and kill his innocent blood. It's on y'all. Y'all the ones who want him to die. Y'all going to be the reason why he died. It's not going to be my fault. I'm the governor. I Nope, not today. Right? And the people say something very profound. They said, um, dang, where'd he go? Yeah, that one. I'm trying to find the exact words and I lost it. That's so sad. Anyways, they basically said in, um, yeah, they said his blood be on us and our children. Just like that. And the reason why it's so profound is the fact that his blood was on them and their children. Uh, <laughs> because after Jesus died, you know, the blood of Jesus that cleanses us of our sins. So worked out. But um, they said that and he released their abyss to them. And Jesus was going to be crucified. So on his way up, you know, the soldiers are mocking him. They take, they make like um, some type of wood, and they they like a crown of thorns, and they kind of create it all together. They like wrap it around each other, um, the the leaves or whatever around each other, and they put on Jesus's head, and they're like, "Oh, you say you're the king of the Jews." All these different things, and when he's walking up the hill to um, go put his cross down. I mean, after they beaten him like crazy, okay? Because like right before they sent him, they, they flogged him, but like they used the cat of nine tails and they used it to the exact amount. So they're like, there's a certain amount, I keep forgetting, I think it's like 12 or something. But um, they basically used the cat of nine tails and the cat of nine tails can't pull out your flesh. So they kept hitting Jesus with that thing and pulling out his flesh every time. And they were having fun, because you know, the Roman soldiers, they were, they were wild. And, um, you know, beat Jesus as much as they could beat him. So when he was walking up with them, they, they made him also carry his cross. So when he was walking up to carry his cross and um, they got to a point where he, he couldn't do it anymore. And somebody named Stephen helped him take it up to the hill to put it up. And Jesus died in the middle between two prisoners, right? And so for Jesus, you know, like, I guess they put like something at the top of your, your cross to tell you what you did in order to prove, show everybody why you were dying. Well, for Jesus, his said, this is Jesus, the king of the Jews. Literally, the man didn't do anything but say that he was the king of the Jews. So, like, <laughs> um, that's what they put for him. They have the other prisoners to the side. One, like, making fun of him, like, oh, like, if you say you're Jesus, like, you should do what they're saying, like, calm down or whatever, because you said you're going to take the temple down and rebuild it in three days. All these other things, which Jesus technically did all of that. And then there's another guy to the other side of Jesus, and he's like, hey, can I, you know, please, if, when you die, take me with you, man. Like, you know, I just want to go to heaven, so please just let me go to heaven. And Jesus is like, I got you, I'll see you in paradise. Um, I don't know what happened to the other guy. Maybe he suffered right before Jesus died. I can't tell you. Um, Sakurai being, he repented right before Jesus died. Um, but Jesus dies on the cross, and the coolest things happen. Basically, the veil of the temple was torn from the top to bottom. The earth shake, shook, rocks were split, graves were open, and many people who were saints went to heaven. Or, yeah, they went up there. <laughs> um, they went to the holy city, city and appeared to many, right? So at this point, then a lot of people were like, oh, wait, he really was the son of God. That's crazy. But the cool thing about the salvation story that I want to talk about, I'm not going to get too deep into it because next week, Jeff is going to go off. <laughs> about that is the temple and the different things. So when they said like, oh, you say you'll build the temple in three days and um, you'll, you'll take down the temple and rebuild it in three days. What Jesus was basically saying was this whole thing that y'all think is Christianity because by coming to the temple and giving up your offering to God and all these different things, you're not going to have to do it like that no more because when I die and I resurrect in three days, these are going to change. 
And since we're at the resurrection, I'm going to go ahead and just get there. I'm a, it's in Matthew 28 and John 20, but I'm going to just like summarize it real quick. So basically, Jesus goes to the tomb. He goes to Joseph's tomb, Joseph of Arimathea. Um, Arima, yeah, Arimathea. And he goes to Joseph's tomb. He gets put in there. You know, the woman obviously went to try to embalm him and all these things, you know, something happens. I think you do something in three days. And so the women are going to go check on Jesus' tomb type, right? And when they go, an angel's there. And he's like, the guy you're looking for isn't here anymore. And they're like, what? <laughs> like, the guy you're looking for isn't here anymore. Um, and he's like, come see, like, literally, um, the angel said, come see the place where he was, where he used to lay. And they realized, and then they told, also told him, go quickly and tell the disciples that he's risen from the dead and he's going to, he's going to be before them in Galilee. That's where they're going to see him. So literally Jesus died, got back up in three days, right? Um, a lot of people also want to like tell people like he went to hell to like take the keys from hell and then go to heaven to sit at the right hand of the father. Obviously he came back to earth because, you know, Thomas, um, <laughs> he had to see Thomas. Thomas had to see him because they were like, you saw Jesus get out of here with that. And he was like, nah, like Jesus is alive. He was like, I'm not gonna believe you until I see Jesus my own self. And they were like, okay. And then Jesus was like, bet. And then he showed him the, the nails where they nailed him on the cross. And that's where the salvation story begins, low key. Like, so salvation story begins in the Garden of Eden, right? But then salvation begins in and of itself after the resurrection of Christ. Because now, you know, Matthew 28, it ends on verse 16 with Jesus telling the disciples to go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you all, with always, even to the end of the age. Oh, the end of the age, amen. And that's how the book of Matthew is finished because that's the gospel number one in the Bible. Um, Cause we have four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, right? So, to our breakout question, where did the story begin? The story begins in the Garden of Eden because sin began in the Garden of Eden. And we have to understand, we have to understand what sin is in order to figure out how salvation starts, right? Why salvation is needed and what we need from it. Um, but then salvation begins at the cross or the recollection of the cross or just understanding of the cross or whatever. Actually, no, salvation begins at the beginning but once you realize that your sin is your sin, right? <laughs> like sin is wrong and sin is not a good thing. So. Yeah, that's where salvation begins because that's where the Holy Spirit is working in you and then you're like, oh, wow, like this is not good. I shouldn't live my life like this anymore. And then you realize you need Jesus and then the cross story really makes an impact on your life. So that is it. We're going to go into prayer now. And the first thing I want us to pray about, wait first, before we go into prayer, do we have any questions? Did I confuse anybody at any point? Does anybody have any comments, concerns? If you don't, say no like in the chat or something. And if you do have a question, ask your question. All right, bet. Okay, cool. Then let's pray. Let's